I'm going to do some reading uh, with you uh, in the Crisis of the European Sciences of, of Edmund Husserl, and I'm in Part 3A, where he actually talks about what the Crisis of the European Sciences is, and I'm at Aphorism 134, where he goes through, you know, num uh, letter by letter, and he talks about, you know, ex so the Aphorism 34 is called the Exposition of, of, the, of the Problem of, of the Science of the Life World. So, he's talking about the, what he, he's basically talking about in this life world, you know, that we have this mathematics and we have all that stuff in this physics, where, but we have science. But there's a problem with the science about, you know, because we have this life world and this causes, this life world with all this pre-given stuff, causes us to, excuse me, <laughs> it causes us to try to, you know, do certain things that we don't exactly have the ability of doing, so I'm going to read with you here. Um, in A, we're talking about the, the difference between object of science and, the, and science in general. Is not the life world as such what we know best, what is always taken for granted in all human life, always familiar to us? Let me show you. In its topology through experience, are not all its horizons of the unknown, simply horizons of what is just incompletely known, i.e. known in advance in respect of its most general, general typology? For, for pre-scientific life, of course, this type of acquaintance suffices, as does as, as its manner, manner of converting the unknown into the known, gaining occasional knowledge on the basis of experience, verifying itself internally and thereby excluding the illusion. At, it, um, and, and induction. This, this suffices for, for everyday practice. practice. If now... Something more can be can be and is to be accomplished if a scientific knowledge is supposed to come about. What can be meant other than what objective science has in view and does anyway? Is scientific knowledge as such not objective knowledge aimed at a knowledge substratum which is valid for everyone with un, which un, unconditioned generality? And yet paradoxically, paradoxically, we uphold our assertion and require that one not let, let the handed down concept of Objects of science be, be substituted because of the century-old century tradition in which we have all been raised for the concept of science in general. The title "Life World" makes possible and demands per perhaps uh, this is a paragraph which Cyril apparently crossed out, which is what this uh, footnote is saying. The title "Life World" makes possible and demands perhaps various different, though essentially interrelated, interrelated scientific. Undertakings and perhaps it is part of genuine, genuine and full scientific discipline that we must treat these all, all together. Though following discipline that we must treat all these together, though following their essential order of founding, rather, rather than treating say just their essential order of founding, rather than treating say just the one, the the objective logical one. <coughs> there has never been a way completely out of scientific consideration. There has never been a scientific inquiry into the way in which the life world constantly functions as, as, a, as a subsoil. So basically what's, you know, being discussed here, he's, he's characterizing this life world as a subsoil, for, for one thing. And he's talking about the difference between, you know, how we, you know, come to object of science through this. Now, in B, he talks about the use of subjective relative experiences for the object of science and the science of them. Now, subject, subject relative experiences. We're talking about all, all experience. That's basically what he's saying here. The sciences build, build upon the life world is taken for granted in that they make use of whatever it happens to be, to be necessary for their particular ends. <clears throat> but to use the life world in this way is not, is not, not to know it scientifically in its own manner of being. For example, Einstein uses the Michelson experiments and the, and the corroboration of them by, by the researchers. So he go, kind of goes into this into this example. So, um... Okay, E. The object of science is as, as subjective constructs as, as, as those of a particular practice, namely those of the theoretical logical, which itself belongs to the full world concreteness of the life world. So, for 
first of all, he's saying that he's talking about objective science, which is talking about objective science is basically discussing um, everything which phenomenology does not approve of. What science is doing here um, is going doing things that it really cannot really get into. So if we have made our contrast with all in this necessary care, we have two, two different things, the life world and an objective scientific world. Through the course, they are related to each other. The, the knowledge of the objective scientific world is grounded in the self-evidence of, of the life world. The latter is pre-given to, to the scientific worker or the working community and, and is ground yet as they build upon this. What is built is something new, something different. So first of all, we've got this life world and, and the objective scientific world. Now, objective scientific world, what is being talked about here is the empirical way because objective science is trying to get beyond things which it can't really get to. Now, first of all, he also, he also talks about how objective science uses this science of the, it uses the subjective relative um, way of talking in the ways of, you know, methodizing. I mean, like, uh, theorizing. Yet it tries to do things um, which it really cannot do. It tries to go beyond what phenomenology has. Now, I'm not saying trying to not, 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 not he's not trying to say that phenomenology is exactly the well he is, but he's not he's not you know saying that I'm not I'm not saying that he, that phenomenology is the, is the entire way to go all the time. But he's just saying that <coughs> we have the the pre-given life world. We don't have the object of scientific life, or the object of scientific world, which we're trying to strive for. And subject, subject, subjective relative sciences is only you know being stepped on, and we are using that to try and go beyond that. And uh, subjective relative language and su subjective relative sciences are being sort of you know forgotten because we're trying to not study what is beyond the life world. The whole crisis of the European sciences is that we're not doing science and philosophy with a subjective relative stance. Now the subjective relative stance is through the subjects of course and it's through the life world because the life world is pre-given to us and the science is, he's saying, is not reflecting, it's not really a science about, you know, us and everything that we're, you know, doing. It's about things beyond things we can even, you know, possibly get into, things that are not exactly knowable. Uh, we have, I'm going to turn to Thus, what appear to be merely a problem of the fundamental basis of the objective sciences or a past problem within the, the universal problem of all objective sciences has indeed proven to be the general and most universal problem. It can be put this way. The problem first appears as the question of relation between objective scientific thinking <coughs> and intuition. It concerns, on the, on the one hand, then logical thinking as the thinking of the logical thoughts. That being the, or f for example, the physicist thinking or of physical theory or purely ma ma mathematical thinking in which mathematics has a purely or, or place in this in, as a system of doctrine as a theory and on the other hand we have intuiting and the, and the intuited in the life world prior to theory <coughs> here arises the ineradicable in in ineradicable illusion of a pure thinking which unconcerned in its purity and intuition already has it has its self-evident truth, even truth about the world, the illusion which makes sense, and the possibility, the scope of object of science questionable. Here one concentrates on the separate separateness of, of, of intuiting thinking and gen generally interprets the nature of the theory of knowledge and its theory of science carried out in respect of two, 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 two correlated sides, being the subjective and the objective.
but as soon as the empty and a vague notion of intuition instead of being something negligible and, and ins insignificant compared to the supreme, supremely significant logical sphere in which one supposedly already has genuine truth has become the problem of the life world as soon as the magnitude and difficulty of this investigation take an enormous pro proportion as one seriously penetrates it. Um, where writing then the science is a problem and as an accomplishment loses its self-sufficiency and becomes a mere partial problem. So, um, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think here, what's being said, what's being said here is that everything that we're doing should be subject, subject, subjective relative, meaning the life world. And the crisis of the European scientists is that the sciences are not concerning the life world and the subject of relative side, it's concerning the object of scientific world, which is not reflective of the life world at all. So, basically, and he's kind of, kind of trying to bring the life world to um, scientific experience, or I mean scientific, you know, use. Sort of, he's trying to bring the life world to the forefront of science. Of science, because currently, at the for, I mean, when he's writing this, currently the forefront of science is is um, the object of scientific world. So basically, with two worlds, the object of scientific world and the life world, and the crisis, the crisis. Why he calls this book the crisis of the European sciences, is because the current prop, uh, things of in philosophy and science is philosophy and science not concerning the life world. The life world is subject relative, and it, it is us. What is what is included in this life world is, of course, the things pre-given in it, like space and time, causality, uh, math, geometry, and all that stuff, mathematization of nature, physics, and all that stuff. And you also have social social structures, organization, um, culture. Now I'm talking about the writings of a lot of a lot of the writings of Alfred Schutz there, and uh, a lot of things. So he's saying basically that the crisis is that we should move sciences and philosophy towards theory of knowledge, and you know, sort of sciences of the life world and the subject of the subject relative things, not object object to scientific. So I guess what do you? What do you think? Do you? And I guess by object of scientific world, he's talking about things which Kant would describe as noumena, or noumenal, because they're things which are not really knowable to us. Therefore, it doesn't concern us, and it doesn't concern anything that does concern us. So why are we studying it? Is basically what he's saying. We should study things that are relative to us, about us, which have a relation to us. That's what science and philosophy should be. So I don't know, what do you think? Do you think that we should try and do things objectively like metaphysics and many many things of science does? Or what, what are you thinking? So, thank you.